Hello, dear colleagues. This is what the brain looks like in an anatomical atlas. In the area highlighted in red, there should be a pituitary gland. This is what the anatomical preparation of the main brain looks like, on which you can see the chiasm, pituitary gland and hypothalamus. As a result of magnetic resonance imaging of the brain, we obtain extremely realistic images. Very similar to an anatomical specimen. I will briefly tell you about the principles of operation of a magnetic resonance imaging scanner. In order to understand how realistic images are obtained in magnetic resonance imaging, it is necessary to recall quantum physics. You see an atom of helium in front of you, which consists of two protons and neutrons in the nucleus and two electrons orbiting the nucleus. Due to the fact that the nucleus and electrons have different charges, the nucleus is positively charged, the electrons are negatively charged, atoms in general have a certain polarity. Under normal conditions, all atoms have a multidirectional charge and are in equilibrium with each other. If the atoms are placed in a magnetic field, they will all line up in the same direction. If atoms in a magnetic field are exposed to electromagnetic radiation perpendicular, vector of magnetic field action, then they will begin to deviate from the vector of the magnetic field, and thus, when the effect of electromagnetic radiation ceases, excess energy will be released. The energy emitted by atoms after exposure to electromagnetic radiation is captured by a tomograph, after which an image is formed. Electromagnetic radiation has a frequency that can only affect hydrogen atoms. Thus, in an MRI scan of the brain, we obtain an image obtained as a result of radiation. Energy directly by the fabric. If you compare the result of magnetic resonance imaging with an anatomical specimen, you can see a striking similarity. I would also like to draw attention to the fact that there are no significant amounts of hydrogen atoms in the air, so parts of the air sinuses or the air that surrounds the skull are colored black, since they do not emit any energy. Now let's take a closer look at the area of the Turkish saddle. The letter A stands for the chiasm or optic nerve cross. The letter B stands for the hypothalamus. The letter C stands for the pituitary peduncle, which connects the pituitary gland and hypothalamus. The letter D stands for the neurohypophysis. Note that it is always lighter than the adenohypophysis due to the accumulation of vasopressin in it. The letter E stands for adenohypophysis. Let me give you a few examples. This is a picture of a person with a normal pituitary gland. As you can see, the shape of the pituitary gland is variable. The neurohypophysis is located in this area. Here is the picture of the chiasm. This is the pituitary peduncle. And this is the hypothalamus. Here's another example. This is the adenohypophysis. This is the neurohypophysis. It's chiasm. This is the pituitary peduncle, and this is the hypothalamus. Another example, this time the cut is frontal. Here we can see the pituitary gland. Moving fluids on the MI will also have a dark color. As well as air. This is what the internal carotid artery looks like, which is located directly near the pituitary gland. Next. I'll give you an example of an MI scan of a patient with pituitary adenoma. This is the pituitary adenoma, this is the neurohypophysis, and this is the optic nerve chiasm. As you can see, the adenoma is quite close to it. Another example of a patient with a pituitary tumor. You can see the pituitary adenoma with the naked eye. It can also be seen that the pituitary adenoma is directly adjacent to the optic nerve chiasm. Another example of a patient with pituitary adenoma. In this case, it is large enough that we do not see the chiasm, the pituitary peduncle, and the neurohypophysis on the MI scan. Thank you for your attention.